the most challenging part was making felt blankets. Um, it was the least primitive thing that we did. Um, it was really challenging because it took a long time and it seemed that nothing ever happened <laughs> until the very end. And so we carded wool for several hours, which was fine, because then you see the amount of wool that, you know, stacks up. Uh, and, you know, laying up the wool was fine. And then starting to slowly agitate the fibers for hours and hours and hours. Like, I think it, take, it took us 10 hours uh, to fill the whole blanket. They have to bring all primitive clothing that they have made out of buckskin, furs, or plant fibers. Everybody is, needs to have some understanding of stone and bone tool usage and manufacture. They have to bring at least 10 pounds this year anyway of pre-processed wild foods and that must include at least one pint of animal fats. We found that the fats are the most necessary of all the food requirements while we're out there to keep energy levels high. But we start with all things that they'll need to go out to be living completely stone age with very few exceptions. The few exceptions that we do allow are certain medical conditions that might require glasses or medications of some kind. After our months of preparation and we have our food and our buckskins and our containers and um, we're ready to head out there, we, we usually spend a trial period of between um, seven and ten days where we can take some of our modern gear with us. Sometimes people are not quite finished sewing their clothing and they want to take a pair of scissors or a metal punch or something like that. And um, sometimes a little bit of food that will help us transition into our all wild foods diet without having to go from modern lifestyle to Stone Age lifestyle all in one day. This is the second time I've spent months preparing to do this, and I, you know, and, and I had a lot of the things ready for this time, but um, I've also done a lot of extra, extra preparations. I feel way more prepared. I spent a lot of time uh, at the keyboard, either working on my books or uh, uh, taking care of business matters and writing emails. And so, in a way, this is this is a way to uh, balance my life, going from one extreme uh, to the other, is that I um, uh, can leave all that behind, go back to the Stone Age, uh, go uh, com completely offline, and uh, and get a chance to rejuvenate. <laughs> I don't have to do the dishes and clean my kitchen and clean up my teepee and make sure my car has got oil in it and make sure I talk to my mom every other day and make sure that, you know, and think about, well, should I be doing something else with my time? Like, should I get a real job? You know, I, I don't have to think about that. If I, if I can let myself not think about those things and just be, that's the, that's the gift of this, of this whole project and this whole month. We have a very good gender and age mix, which is really nice. It's not just a bunch of 26-year-old males who want to go out and prove their, themselves. You know, we have, you know, we've had children and we've had oh, people into their 50s and 60s involved in their classes and projects before. So that gives more of a feeling of village and wholeness. The hard skills of learning how to make fire and how to identify plants and um, how to make buckskin clothing and so on. Those are the simple things. The difficult things are how to get along in a small close-knit group when you're cold sometimes or hungry or tired. I feel really good about the group of people here. Um, I think everybody's really solid and everybody's really nice and working, working out really good as a group. Um, so I feel we can face pretty much anything at this point. We have spent enough time uh, being cold and wet and hungry uh, that I've learned that these things don't have to be uh, debilitating. So I know that whatever comes up, uh, we'll be able to face it with confidence. When you live together for 24 hours a day, more or less, for many months at a time, you can even liken it to a, you know, a marriage relationship or something. You go through your honeymoon experience where everybody's behaving properly and you start to see all the little 
idiosyncrasies in everybody's personality that can get annoying and you get annoyed and you work through your annoyance and you work on your communication skills and you come out the other side of that being tighter and being stronger together as a group. I'm really good at being happy and cheerful even when I'm like cold and wet and hungry and and I think that's what I bring to a group. I was very thrilled and honored that uh, Lynx invited me to join her on this trip. Uh, I think she's incredibly skilled and knowledgeable at what she does. Now I've been uh, doing these skills a long time too, uh, but I tend to rely on my metal knives and needles and uh, nylon thread and things like that. But um, what Lynx does is the real deal. She does the Stone Age skills as Stone Age people would have done them. When I started in 2001 with the first project, I likened it to being about a five-year-old in a traditional indigenous um, tribal culture as far as my knowledge base for how to live in a materialistic way. And now it's eight years later, and I think I've probably become about 13 as far as what my knowledge is out there. So I, I feel like I'm constantly learning myself. It's been really good to work with Lynx. Um, uh, she's been my best teacher in primitive living skills, really. Um, and what I really like about her is that, first, she's practiced this stuff for a very long time. And uh, so she has a lot of experience to share. And I really like that. Um, I took the basic skills class with Lynx, and I was very interested in doing the project during the summer. I thought I'd learn a lot. And so I went to, to meet her, and I was instantly, I was like, oh, yeah. You know, I, she had her, all her things laid out, like felted coat, you know, bartend muckalucks, and I was, mittens, and I was just like, show me. You know? Like what Link says, you know, like primitive skills are really simple. You know, pick up a couple of rocks, glow sticks, put them together, and that's it. But it's just the little tricks that experience gives you, um, that really makes a big difference in terms of the time that it takes you, or the energy that it takes you to make those things, and how to use them efficiently. And um, so I really like that Lynx kind of has those little tricks. I think she's a great teacher. I've never been able to ask her a question that she doesn't have at least some knowledge about or experience with. I remember thinking like, have you ever tanned like a stomach? Do you have, has anyone ever tanned a stomach? And she's like, oh yeah. You know. <laughs> and it's just, I've, I've never been able to think of something that could, that stumped her. We need to live what we really love and I am not doing this to become rich. I'm doing this because I'm completely passionate and in love with doing what I do. I love being here on this earth. I love sharing and being together with other people who care and have respect. All of our classes are run on donations. And when the classes are over, we go out and we do this project, which is a completely free project. I'm not trying to make money doing any of it. I'm trying to live in a good way and teach other people and share with other people how to do that. Anybody who wants to come and who has those skills to join us as far as our Stone Age requirement guidelines, uh, we take it out and we go into the wilderness and we try them out using the things that we've made and the things that we have taken with us. Ooh.